Welcome into Game Day TV. It's the same thing I say every single week right here. So, Max, I need to say something different. So, let's yeah, hold it. No, no, not, that's for you a little bit I'm later. that sucker today, hey, we, got a, we got a great show lined up for you today right here on Game Day TV. We're going to start out the first segment reviewing the games. And, Max, there's a bunch of games we got to get in. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what. I know we expand, really expand our opening here because of that. And right. uh, we were telling our producer earlier today, don't worry about the, the commercials anytime soon. Right. We got enough material out here to do about two hours. Well, I think they'll understand if we don't even play one. But we'll, we'll <laughs> see. Especially. In the, se- in the segment coming up, overhaul and demolition, our new session, <laughs> complete with the hard hat. But, hey, folks, I'm going to let you guess on on uh, who's going to be wearing it because uh, I got pretty good hair. Hey, we're going to break down the SEC, too, and we talk about big games around the country, but the SEC is where we're going to specialize. No doubt about that. And I know there's been some ups and downs. I, did, I was doing a show earlier this morning on the radio, and I was asked, what about the SEC? Well, we know what we got. We got one in 13. You know, and I hate to say that right now, but until somebody steps up, it looks like Georgia's on the way to improvement. And, of course, that was something that's been a kind of a right. surprise to me. But the fact they are, and they handle Mississippi State, we're going to get into those details. By the way, I heard uh, Kentucky hired an archaeologist. Did you yeah. hear about that? No, tell me about that. Yeah, they hired an archaeologist. They're trying to find evidence of the last time Kentucky beat Florida. Hey, boy, I can tell you, <laughs> 31 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yeah, so some other schools may be hiring some too as well, but we're going to talk about all that. Hey, we're going to have the high school section. I'm adding a new kind of twist on the high school uh, segment this week. We're going to talk about quick facts. I'm just going to give you about 10 things going on all around the state in high school that you might find interesting. We'll do that as well as give you some scores and also talk a little bit about recruiting. We've got a couple of guys that have really stepped up this week. Kim Shera is going to give us game day weather without the uh, 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 you see. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I'm proud. Huh? Hey, I like that little twist we had yeah, last no, week. We did. We kind of <laughs> left that in there, folks, kind of to peel back the curtain just a little bit, let you know what really goes on. Yeah. Even though I'm perfect, sometimes Mac, Max and Kim may not be, but no. uh, you know. I live my life just that way, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a game day weather coming up. And then Max is going to talk about the upcoming games in the SEC this week, and there's a bunch of them. And then he's going to make you all hungry because Ooh. we're going to go back to – What's for supper with Max Howell? And that's been a, a fan favorite for many years. You, you know, I told you, I, I, I've been fortunate enough I get a chance to speak to groups all over the South. And, and I, I did the thing on, on conference call and on, on uh, statewide radio for years. And I promise you, it don't matter what I, if I talk about every All-American they got and the great team they got, when the, when the speech is over, first thing, hey, Max, what's for supper? It's been lasting about 25 years. And so you know, how, to, how, how do you make that lasagna? Hey, by the way, next week we're going to have a segment with our game day chef, Marty Staples. We're going to stay tuned for that. But right now we're going to come back and talk about Alabama, Auburn, and several others right here on Game Day TV. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. You can travel The one and only. Thank you. I 
never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. Okay, well, this segment is going to be jam-packed, and I can't wait for you to see what's coming up here in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about Central State Bank. Central State Bank is a, a proud sponsor of Game Day TV, celebrating 100 years of honesty. Whether it's checking, loans, mortgages, they've got you covered. They offer full, a full variety of personal and business accounts and services to meet all of your banking needs. You can access online and mobile banking. You can even make a deposit from your phone using Apple Pay, or you can go and streamline your bills with Bill Pay. You don't like to do any of that? No problem. Walk into one of their many convenient locations. They have personal bankers and loan officers standing by to serve you every step of the way. That's Central State Bank, your bank in Central Alabama. Okay, folks. Well, it's time for demolition <laughs> and overhaul, and uh, the head contractor is here today. I wish I had my hammer. That's all I'm going to bring one. Well, you may have to have one well, next week, knock some of these guys down. Absolutely. So, but, you know, it, it, this thing is going to change week in and week out, Jerry. Right. We understand it. And it's not a permanent demolition, but for this week, the teams I saw, i.e., Mississippi State. That's where we're going to start. That needed, they need to level. All right, Where's wait your bulldozer? Let me tell you this. We're going to start with teams that need total, total demolition. Total demolition. Exactly right. Then we're going to talk about teams that's just on our remodel list. Right. And then we're going to talk about teams that need a little paint and touch up. And then we're yeah. going to talk about one team that don't need nothing. I believe All that. Right, so it's... Mississippi State is on demolition and overhaul. And, you know, they go from, you know, from really from the penthouse to the outhouse, the right. way they played. They, they took – LSU apart the week before. I mean, everything was in sync. Dan Mullen was calling the right plays, and Fitzgerald was throwing the ball and running off. What they get to Georgia, I believe they must have let that enthusiasm off somewhere around Columbus because they sure didn't, didn't get, get on the bus. They did, did not it? get on the bus and get there. That's right. You know, you go back and look, and it was a total domination by Georgia. And, I, you know, I'll say once again, uh, their improvement has surprised me. I knew it would be coming down the road, but I had them three, on a three-year plan. Kirby Smart's got them on a two, and they're on the way right now. Nobody else in the East is playing as good as they are right now. I did think that Mississippi State could at least slow them down a little bit. But, I, you know, I, got, I woke up early this morning, Jerry, thinking about how did, that, how did Kirby and his staff do that? Well, it dawned on me. They took Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, back when he was on the staff, went back and pulled those tapes and broke it down that way. They didn't look at what they did against LSU. They looked about what he did against practice against the Georgia Bulldogs. So, I, you know, I, I, I have a better understanding for it right now. Not to excuse what happened in, uh, over in Starkville, or in Starkville the week trying to prepare for that team. Right. So I, I, you know, I'm putting Mississippi State in this demolition. Now here's another thing: where we take them off next week or not, I believe they go to Auburn, and we're going to talk a little bit about that game coming up later in the show. We've today. got a lot to discuss about that. But hey, for all you that, uh, well, especially Philip, give me that twenty. I did get Max to wear the wear the hat. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't believe you'd do it, but it's demolition oh, time. Absolutely. We're going to do this to these first three teams. That's right. We're going to have to take, you know, as this thing unfolds, you'll understand, I think, get a better picture of where we're coming from. All right. We're going to come back maybe to Mississippi State a little bit, but yeah. but let's go on to Missouri. Oh, uh, my goodness. Now that, I'm going to tell you about Missouri. They didn't have anything to start demolition. No, yet, they didn't. Did. And, and, you know, and, and Bless Barrow was hard. I, I watched, this is what I've gotten into now. In these teams that I've seen that perform poorly, then I try to watch their press conference after. See, what is the explanation? And I've got some later on in the show that we're going to really get into. But Barry Odom gets up there, and here was the sad thing. First of all, the stadium, when Auburn goes to Missouri this past week, the stadium was only half full. Well, that's the first, that's the death nail right. for a football coach if you can't draw him to the stands. That's the first thing that happens. Second is then he gets up before the camera when it's over. They kind of pan the, the, the audience out there for the media call. Right. Three or four media guys was all in the room. Yeah, at the press conference. At the press conference. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So I'm just saying to you, Coach, you, a couple of things you got to do. You got to have a complete overhaul some way. I don't know whether you need to call our office or not, but I'm telling you right now, if you don't do something about this program, you, you'll finish dead last. They rank 14th in the conference now in, in overall performance. They're just not there. Barry gets up there and made this comment. He says, you know, I was on this team. I played here uh, back in the 90s, and this is what happened. We were at the same place that this team is now, but we overcame. We changed it, and we changed the mindset and the culture. Then that, he paused. Then he said, I came back 
with Coach Pickle back in the, in the early 2000s. He hired me on the staff. This program was at the same place, but we overcame. And he says, guys, we will overcome. And I'm sitting there thinking, not in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not with the way not it's going. Not anytime soon at the way they're going now. So Missouri's got a long way to go. They do. And, uh, I, you know. They need to change uniforms, too. I well, couldn't even hardly stay in the they, color. They, is it about the color of your heart? It is. It's the same. But you know what? Okay, not to get off so, on color uniform. They are so far removed from the competitive aspect. The first two years they were in the conference, they made it to Atlanta. They hadn't even claimed, they don't even have a bus ticket anymore. I don't even know right. a bus runs from St. Louis now to uh, Columbia from uh, to Atlanta. So they've got a long way to go. I hope he can get it done. I don't want to, you know, adhere to a coaching change by anybody, but I can tell you this, uh, something's got to happen at Missouri for that program to get better. Well, and the whole school's had some turmoil over the Big last time. two or three years. And, Big time. and you got to figure that some of that trickles down. Yes. All right. So, uh, let, let's talk about Arkansas. Well, you know, that's. And I know you got friends up there and inside on the, information. On the ride over from Mississippi into Birmingham where we tape our show. But here's the thing, guys Arkansas might have the biggest turmoil environment of anybody in the conference right now. It goes way beyond just the head football coach. It goes all the way into the athletic department. And that's what's going on in, in Arkansas right now. You know we have a very close personal friend that right. covers every game. He was in Dallas this weekend uh, with the Texas A&M game. And he said it was unbelievable. And here's what's happening behind the scene first, and then we'll get into the program. There are some very, very wealthy alumni that has now become involved with the University of Arkansas i.e. Jerry Jones, if you want to know the truth. He, is a, he was a captain of the last national championship team in 64. Uh, he's been a, an avid supporter of the program. Of course, he just happened to own the Dallas Cowboys where they, right. in, in, in the Jerry Dome where they played on Saturday. Very unhappy about the outcome of this ball uh, club as it stands today. So I, I think there's some inherent problems that go on at Arkansas that we, we the fans, probably are not really aware of. The environment up there is way up in the northwest it's, corner you of Arkansas. it's what I say about you falling. That's not a slap at you fall, right. Alabama. It's just that you can't get you there can't from get here. There. You got to go somewhere else to get there. So it's hard to recruit there. Right. That's the point. They lose to Texas A&M fifty to forty-two in overtime. Uh, of course, you know we talk about Texas A&M. The only coach out there I think is going to play themselves into a successful program is Kevin Sumlin. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he wins that one. He's 3-1 and one right now. The only loss they had was to UCLA, and then we'll get into it because they got South Carolina coming up this week. So, But he, they played very, very well. Made a few mistakes along the way, but the, the Kirk, Christian Kirk, the wide receiver, first-team All-American, if you watch that game, you'll see why. He actually caught about three balls, but let me tell you two of those. One, he caught a, a – a kickoff in the end zone ran it back 99 yards for a touchdown. That broke the tie. Then the two, two or three plays later when uh, Texas A&M had the ball, a 10-yard out pattern, he was wide open in the end zone. He actually, in my opinion, his efforts won that ball game uh, even though they went to overtime. So Arkansas has got a lot to, to deal with trying to get ready. They'll win this week. they got New Mexico State coming to town. But the fact is – can they go further? They still got Alabama and Auburn. They still got Ole Miss and Mississippi State. They still got LSU. They still got a, a way to go. For, All right. Uh, so that's a uh, total overhaul and demolition would be Arkansas, Missouri, and uh, Mississippi State. So that's uh, how they uh, stack up. Let's move on to remodel this. Now these are teams that need some help. Maybe they got a couple of broke windows. Need sure. some uh, some uh, got some some back steps falling down. The back porch falling off. They need some help. Let's start with Tennessee. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Now, Butch you. Jones may have a bigger problem than, than right. Uh, here's another team that's three and one, and nobody's happy. Uh, I mean, nobody's happy. Right. It, and again, it goes back to the performance. They win thirteen to seven this past weekend against UMass. U University of Massachusetts were zero and five, and Tennessee had to struggle. They had to change quarterbacks. They had to do everything right. they could to get the win. Well, I'm telling you, here's what will happen. Georgia comes to town this week for Tennessee. Georgia's going to have a few problems. We'll get into that in just a few minutes. But the fact is, is Tennessee right now, they happen to be searching for a way. I think they have a communication problem. They can't relate to what's going on on the field. We've seen that more than once happen back when, the, when they got beat by Florida a week before. The secondary didn't get, to, get the call right and they get a long pass and get beat. And we'll talk about some other teams that have that same problem. But mm -hmm. Tennessee right now, let's just say this. Let's say Georgia comes to town Saturday. And there's a grumbling in the in the fan base. Right. That stadium seats 110,000. What if 50,000 people show up? I'm telling you right now, there's going to be some immediate action. Here's where Butch Jones 
really has a problem. Not only he's got a problem on the field, and I think it's communication, to be honest with you, but he's got a problem because there's a new athletic director and a new president. On, there's a new sheriff in town, and they, are, they can't afford to let that program drift back to where it was when Coach Jones first got there. He's done a remarkable job in recruiting. He's getting really fine players there, but they're not performing on the field. So there's some polishing got to be done, some rehabbing. You're going to have to make some substitution. You may even have to move a coach around to get something going on. If they don't beat Georgia this weekend, and, and we're going to talk about that right. a little bit later in the show. If they don't beat Georgia this weekend, uh, I don't think it, anything but bad things are going to happen in Tennessee. We had a friend up in the press box at, uh, at Vandy this weekend. He sent us a message out that they actually put the Tennessee UMass game on the Jumbotron <laughs> in, Nashville. in Nashville while they were warming up on the field. Now, you talk about a stadium full of people that really doesn't care about Tennessee. That was a perfect place to stick <laughs> it up. So it, that's just And you know what was ironic it. about that? We'll get into that in a minute. But it, that stadium's only seats about 45,000. Right. Half of them are Alabama fans. More than half, <laughs> they said, yeah. Okay, South Carolina. Move on to South Carolina well, you just know, a little you bit. Know, I think Will Muschamp is running the same thing. He's got it. To, got them to a certain level. They, they beat Louisiana – uh, Tech, um, as Skip Holtz's team, uh, they they barely get by on that team. They struggle and finally win it at the end. Here's the bad thing for Will: they got to pack up now and go to College Station, Texas this week. Take on take on an A&M team that's fighting for their life out there. Will's okay right now with his contract. He's in his second year and he's he's mm -hmm. built building that team slowly. He came into Alabama and got him a quarterback, uh, and they're doing fairly well. But the inconsistency. That the program is showing right now, I'm telling you guys, I've been there so many times. When you can't, when everybody's not on the right, same page, the players not doing, the players do one thing, the coaches doing another. It it never has a good ending. Is all you know, I tell you. I noticed one thing. It's like when they would kick the extra point. There was one guy that couldn't remember that he was on the extra point exactly team. Right. That sort all, of thing. It just kind of the substitution trickles pattern. out. Right. Let me tell you what happened. If you really want to know how. I, a team is going to perform on the field. Watch the sidelines. If it's organized, and we, there's some that really are, and there's some that aren't. Those that aren't, that that translates into other dis, disorganization. Tell you the truth, mostly into coaching. All right, let's move on to LSU, Max. You got a couple of minutes. Oh, Syracuse we know right there came to town. They had to fight like crazy. Here's the thing they did: they took Etlin, the quarterback, yeah. off and played the pure freshman, Brennan. And you know what? He might start this week. By the way, they got Troy coming up, and that's going to be a that's yeah. Going that's to be a, in our our, our it, notes for, for the show, but that that's an interesting. That ball is game. going to be a very interesting ball game. They, Coach Ogeron has get him. He's got him going. He's playing twenty plus freshmen. They're building for the future, and I know he's going to take some criticism because they didn't play well against Syracuse. Let's just say Troy goes and beats them. Uh, I mean, the, the fans are going to have an up. They, they'll have an uprising down there. But I don't think that will really happen. I think Troy are playing well, but they've got problems. They still got. They can identify where the right players are. They know they've got some outstanding young freshmen. Well, I was going to say, talent's not an issue, is it? Well, inexperienced talent is. Okay, gotcha. I mean, experienced talent. they got inexperienced talent. You can't throw 18-, 19-year-olds, I don't care if he's 6'5", 240, and can run a 4'5", to play against a 22-year-old. Because a 22-year-old will slug him in the mouth, and he'll be laying on the ground. He can't run. So that, that's that's the difference right there if you got to have that experience. All right. Well, Ole Miss, to kind of wrap this up. Uh... You know, the bad thing for, for Matt Luke, is that they announced this past Thursday the, the, the university has already put out a search committee to find a new coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they, he will stay the end of the year. But what kind of motivation is that? they got to go to Tuscaloosa this week. Now, they've beaten Alabama in the last four years. They beat them twice, once in Tuscaloosa and one in Oxford. But I'll guarantee you guys that Matt Luke, family, all went to Ole Miss. He's been there 10 years, all the good stuff. He's a good, clean-cut guy. He's working like crazy to build that program. Uh, basically rebuild it after the Hugh Freeze era. But the fact is, when he knows he's not going to get the job, how much motivation is to go over and spend 20 hours a day? It's hard. I'm telling you, it's hard. I'm really surprised that the Ole Miss family, quote, the administration, went ahead and released that statement about looking for a new coach. Do you think they did it because they don't want any coach that's thinking about leaving here in a few weeks to not know that they're looking. Oh, I, I think that, and I think they want the, they've sent in a mission to the NCAA that we're going to clean house all gotcha. the way. Everybody that was caught up in all the infractions that's been levied at them, uh, that they're trying to clean and remove themselves. The, I think that, in all fairness to Matt and his staff, that they've sacrificed this year. Uh, now, on the other side of that, they've lost five linemen. They've had five knee operations since the beginning of the season. 
three of them were starters. They A.J. Brown, the best wide receiver, might be in the country, went down with a knee injury. They don't know whether he'll be back this week or not. All I can tell you is what I saw this week, they better take, they better play 22 at a time against Alabama as opposed to 11. All right, so wrapping up paint and touch-up section, so to speak, you got uh, – uh, I mean, uh, the remodel list. Ole Miss, South Carolina, Tennessee, and LSU. They could go either way. They, they might could. move up into, into uh, overhaul this next week. Or they could come away with some wins and, and, and the improve winning themselves. winning is what it's all about. You right. know, and we complain about Florida, two, one point win, and how Tennessee play, but they're still winning. You know, and Kevin Sumlin, I said, probably is the only coach out there that really was on the hot seat, quote, because of performance. They lose that. They were up 44, uh, excuse me, 34 points in that game against UCLA. They lose that ball game by one. I mean, the whole world came crashing in on him. He gradually started building back. Now he's got South Carolina coming to town this week. He, he's probably going to get another win there. He may play himself not only off the demolition, but in the upper echelon he could. before this is over. All right. Hey, we're going to continue this conversation. Max is going to take his hard hat off and fix his hair during the commercial break. We're going to come back and talk about a little paint and touch up who's on that list. And then there's one team in the SEC that's just got a great foundation, solid, strong, not going anywhere. I guess you can imagine who that is. So we'll take a little break right now. We'll come back with Max and more right here on Game Day TV. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. You can travel. The one and only. Thank you. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high impact, full color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. Hey, whether you're watching us on Charter Channel 80, ACN Network, or on our Facebook page at Ask Game Day TV, on our new YouTube channel at Game Day TV with Max Howell and Jerry Young, or if you just want to listen to us and not see us, which a lot of people <laughs> prefer to do, especially after your hard hat trick, you can join us on podcasts. So we got a podcast, we got YouTube channel, we got Facebook, Ask Game Day TV for Facebook and Twitter, and then of course right here on Charter Channel Lady on the Alabama Cable Network. So, Max, let's continue on now as we move on in to some teams that did pretty good this week, need a little touch-up maybe. Let's just start with Auburn. Well, you know, that's another one. Coach Malzahn has really come under a lot of criticism. And they're, won they're winning as well. They were winning when he was under all the criticism. Right. But I think what happens, Jerry, particularly the early part of the season, is that the expectations based on what the media has spun their projection to be doesn't meet that expectation for the fan base, then what do they do? They all crowd in. Right. I think Auburn is clawing their way out right now. They had a great effort, I think, uh, going uh, this past week to, to Columbia, Missouri. Uh, they beat that 
about that team. They didn't have the starting running back. Now, I think that's going to be cause for a little touch-up. Uh, does Petway stay in as a full-time starter? Does he come back or does uh, Kieran Johnson right. take the lead? Johnson scored five touchdowns with a running game. Now, what didn't surprise me at all was Auburn running the football. That is the way Gus Malzahn's offense is built. Most people that run the spread or the read option spread them out to throw it. Gus turns and ends it off, and he's always had good running backs. I think he's got him two right now that's going to work. So I think saying that, I think they catch Mississippi State down. They got them at home this coming weekend. I like Auburn in this one uh, probably three to seven points at least, maybe more than that. Mississippi State plays like it did against Georgia. Yeah. Auburn will win by three touchdowns. Well, I saw the line today. It's double digits for yeah. Auburn. But it also depends on – which Auburn team and which Mississippi, Mississippi State team show up. Does. If the Mercer Auburn team that played Mercer shows up yeah. and the Mississippi State team that played LSU shows up, Auburn's it's going to be a double digit the other and way. And here we go again with all the, you know, the right. beating the drum. Let's move, let's let the Gus bus get out of town. Right. So I, it's going to be interesting to watch. That, I think therein lies, and we'll just take a side step quickly, why most people look at the SEC and saying it's somewhat down. This It's lack of, in, of consistency. The inconsistency that shown every Saturday, like I, Mississippi State, plays great, moves up in the polls, right. uh, then they go and just look awful against Georgia. So I think right. there it lies uh, the opinion polls is where it is. While you're on Georgia, they they need a little touch up, but they're doing pretty good. They're doing very, very well. I think they're ahead of their, their projected plan, I'll be honest with you. Here's the only problem Georgia's got. Uh, the Eason kid that started last year, started 12 ball games, started the first game this year, was hurt, had a knee injury. Then what do they do? They elevate the freshman in Fromm. Fromm has two outstanding ball games back to back. Georgia wins. Georgia's four and zero right now. They moved to number seven in the country on the AP polls this week. You look at the, those guys right now. When they go to uh, excuse me, go to Knoxville this weekend. Who does he start? Mm -hmm. uh, and let me just tell you, I've been on teams before that had controversy at the quarterback position. Whenever that happens, you got different factions of that team will drift to support one guy or the other. When you go to play in Knoxville, guys, as bad as Tennessee is, I've been fortunate enough, I've been on the sidelines there more than once. That is a tough, tough place to play regardless of how the team's doing. So you look at that right now and said, what does Kirby do? It's a big decision. My opinion, he better go with a guy that's still got the hot hand. You don't want a division. If he does that, what does that do to the guys that really want Eason back as a quarterback? And if you've never been to Neyland Stadium, I have. I sat in the upper deck on the top row, really. You don't need it to, moves. Right. You don't need a <laughs> pair of binoculars. You've no. got to have a telescope. You're right. 110,000. So, anyway, all right, quickly, let's move on to Florida. Oh, my Michael goodness. Wayne, you saw his post-game interview. And I, I did. I know what you really want to say, but, but – uh, <laughs> It's like he wasn't there. It's like he, he. It's like how did I win? How did we win this? Yeah, it's like one of those little bubbles above his head yeah, that's got his thoughts in it. They've or done. You're right. They've done that twice back to back. Yeah. And it's like he has no answer for that. Uh, I do think I'm gonna give him credit for making the quarterback change. Uh, you know, take nothing away from Felipe Franks. He was a good young guy coming on. But in a game like that this past week against Kentucky, uh, and Kentucky had outplayed them the first three quarters without a doubt. They had to have some kind of change. So what they do, they bring Del Rio back. Now, he's a guy that's got the experience. His dad's a coach in the NFL, right. and he's had, but he's been hurt. He made the thing. I will be interested now. Vanderbilt comes to Gainesville this weekend. Right. Vanderbilt's coming off of slaughter, you know, and they well, were slaughtered. That's the next on the list. <laughs> <I know. laughs> they, 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 they've, got to, they've got to regroup. Right. I think Florida gets that win this week because I think Del Rio start. I think he continues to start for them. He makes a few things different. Uh, happen for them that they've not been able to get done with Franks. Franks is, Franks is going to be a great quarterback in the, in, in the SEC, but he's still too young. He's a redshirt freshman, got a lot of growing. He's a big kid and can run and throw. But right now they need some stability at that quarterback position, and I think they found it with Del Rio. All right, let's move on to Alabama. They're the only team that we feel like, you feel like, really doesn't need much. Just stay motivated. I mean, look, I, you want me to – the stats are just – they're gaudy. Uh, how about this? Uh, they, ran, they beat they beat. Vanderbilt 59 to nothing. And they could have been 75 to nothing. It was 59 to nothing going with 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Uh, they, play, they ran 97, uh, excuse me, 93 plays. They gained 675 yards total offense. They controlled the ball 43 minutes. They played over 60 players. They even killed the clock in the last uh, – last quarter by taking a, a knee and not trying to run the run the, uh, the ball up and down the field on them. 38 first downs, punted only twice, had no turnovers. 
The guys, that's, you can't go to practice and do that every day. Right. I think the motivation came, Coach Saban is, the, is a master at finding little nuggets out there to put on the bulletin board to talk about what the other team is saying about his team and really embarrassing the guys into doing something. I did hear one statement afterwards uh, from some of the commentaries. They, look, they were looking for the anticipated polls that just came out on Monday. Uh, <clears throat> AP had them, had Alabama one, and this guy said, well, I know Alabama's one, and their number twos were number five, and their number threes, which played the fourth quarter, were number ten. Right. And I believe that. They played they played 15 offensive linemen. I've never heard of that. I'll be honest with you. I've seen – I've been on some teams that ran up big scores. We didn't ever play the threes, but maybe the last snap or two. Mm -hmm. But they played the whole quarter and really did well with it. And – and tried to kill the ball on top of that. They did, and here are the players. <laughs> they had about 496 yards, I believe, in rushing offense. Yeah. And the players wanted another. They wanted about the two or three. They wanted another touchdown and and to run the 500 yard. They wanted 500 yards for their record. And Coach Saban was laughing on the sideline at them. And that was Bo Scarborough trying to get him to do that. Right. Coach Saban, I've never seen him laugh on the sideline, right. ever. He's coaching to the last snap. Right. It wasn't much you could coach after that, though. Why are you talking about Alabama? Let's go on into next week's game. Ole Miss oh, at Alabama. Yeah. Big ball game it's for huge. Ole Miss. What if, what if Ole Miss could continue? Well, it's not going to happen. No. But. But, you know, that would be – they'd probably close the university for two or three week vacation. <laughs> they'd get an early – you know, they get an early break. I just – you know, I just think there's too much negative on that side. Uh, Alabama's on a roll. Alabama's got one goal now to win the national championship. And I've looked around. I watched Clemson a little bit this, this weekend. I watched Oklahoma. I watched Michigan and Ohio State. I watched Southern Cal. I had not seen a team – in the country that is proficient in what they do is Alabama. And I, if they can maintain that, now I think here's the challenge from a coach is to get them to play that level every week. It's not the fact that your talent's not there. It's not the fact that you don't have a, a, a game plan that will execute, if executed, against the opponent. Right. It's getting the guys to play 100% when they know they're already better than the opposition. Well, the starters obviously got some motivation when you put 15 linemen in a game. They know <laughs> that depth chart. They got somebody ready to take their they place. They really so. do. And, but that's that, – look, Alabama's been seven years consecutively, had the number one recruiting class in the country. When you get a six-foot-three, 230-pound running back that high jumps over two players, I'm not talking about stepping over them, guys. Mm -hmm. He went over their head. That's a Harris kid out of California, right. the freshman. I mean, I, I never saw that before. I've seen them – you know, lip leg and kind of lean one. This guy high jumped over the guy's head and then stepped over another went in the end zone. Unbelievable talent. Mississippi State travels down to Auburn on wow. the Plains, and we kind of dissected that. We but have it depends already. Depends on which team shows up. I think I think Gus Malzahn's got the perfect opportunity now to play himself out of all the controversy that's going on. Mississippi State, I, you know. I watched Dan Mullen. Oh, Dan's done a remarkable job. He's got the best winning record at Mississippi State. He's not in doubt of jeopardy of his contract at all. Dan Mullen can stay in Starkville, Mississippi the rest of his career if he chooses to. He's a guy that makes $4.7 million a year. He's moved his, fam his wife's family there, his whole family there. He's won more games. He's been to more bowls. And he recruits extremely well. And I'll tell you this, might, because of where they are in Starkville, right. do a better coaching job than even Coach Saban. The reason is you can't get five-star players to go to Starkville, Mississippi, and stay. Right. I mean, it's just, it's just it's not a it's not a slam. It's just a, it's a location situation right. for him. And the historical – Evidence is there about wins and losses overall. So right. Dan done a remarkable job. You know, he went into Georgia and found the Fitzgerald kid who wasn't even a quarterback. Uh, and, and, of course, this past weekend he played like he wasn't a quarterback. Right. So I think he's, they've got some work to do there. I like Auburn in this ball game coming up, mainly just because I think Mississippi State's going to go – kind of stumble along trying to get out of that, the doldrums that they found themselves in Athens. And their running game is not going to run against Auburn's defense. All right, I want to talk about a school close to your heart as Troy. LSU I, and Troy. That is going to be such an interesting ball game. Brandon Silvers uh, is going to be a – he'll be a top five pick in the NFL. He's a quarterback that's already set more records than any of the ones – and we broke all the records when I was there as far as uh, throwing the football around. He's already thrown for over 9,000 yards in his career. He's, he's going to be a, probably a low first, maybe upper second round draft pick. Uh, 
uh, overall. And and I think he may he's going to be in the top three or four quarterbacks taken. He's got a great opportunity. They got a, another. They got a, a two hundred forty pound running back has already broken every Troy record in rushing already down there. So they got some talent. Now where they can go in and play LSU, if LSU plays like LSU normally plays, then Troy can't win because they don't have the numbers to win. But I'll tell you, you let LSU stumble around like they did against Mississippi State, Troy's coming back with a win on that. And I, I, I'm on the record right now saying that. Now, everything has to play in their, in, you know, in their role. LSU has to help them. they got to lay it on the ground. they got to throw a pick. They can't have, they can't have a run back on a, uh, uh, on a punt or, or a uh, kickoff. Now, you put all that together. We've seen LSU do that before. Right. That plays right into Troy's hands if right. that's the case. I think Neil Brown and that staff goes down there with that team. I think they play well, but I just don't know that you know that they can last for 60 minutes on the field in Baton Rouge, the hardest place in America to play at night. Uh, and it's still hot and muggy down there uh, in the swamp. It's going to be interesting to see if Troy can come away with the win. Well, okay, that's our report for uh, this week as far as college is concerned. We've got a couple of teams we'll try to squeeze in here in just a few minutes. But before we go to break, I want to tell you about our uh, one of our sponsors here. That's Central State Bank, located in Jefferson and Shelby County, celebrating 100 years of loyalty if uh, and honesty as well. If you are looking for checking, loans, mortgages, uh, they've got you covered off a full variety of personal and business accounts and services to meet all of your banking needs. Have access to online banking using the mobile banking. You can make a deposit using your phone, use Apple Pay, or go straight to streamline your bills and pay your bills there. You don't like to do any of that? No problem. Walk into one of their many convenient locations, and you can have personal bankers and loan officers standing by to serve you. That's Central State Bank. Folks, we appreciate you. You're supporting uh, our sponsors here on Game Day TV. I'm going to talk some high school when we come back. A lot of things going on around the state right here on Game Day TV. How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? You're everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. Back into Game Day TV, everyone. I'm Jerry Young, along with Coach Max Howell. We're going to talk a little high school ball now, Max, as we do every week. It's one of the things that makes our show so unique is that we throw in some college and high school around the state of Alabama. So we appreciate you watching us here on Game Day TV. Let's start with 5A now, the top 10 in 5A and how they how they fared this week. Number 10, St. Clair County. They beat Woodlong. Number 9, Eufaula. They lost to Carroll. Um, big big game there right off the bat. And you didn't even know where Carroll was. Well, I did, wait. but it just kind of hit me. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But so congratulations to Carroll. They won 35 to 23. Winona uh, beat Shelby County 52 to 8. Jackson beat Williamson 28 to 12. And I'm going to pause right there to tell you this next game this week is one of those rivalry <laughs> games in the state of Alabama. Uh, Jackson plays Thomasville. They're right down Highway 5, Highway 11, whatever it is, they're 5, I think, that runs through. Both of those towns closed down. Yep. You've heard me talk several times about Jackson High School, Max, yeah. and how they put on a show, but that is going to be a great ball game. May Jemison, they beat Russellville. Russellville's just down this year, and, you know, everybody knows Coach Mark Keaton, a good friend of mine up there in Russellville, but 
He got he got it handed to him 56 to 10 by May Jemison. Beauregard beat Talladega 47 to 6. Carroll, as we mentioned, beat Eufaula. Alexandria beat uh, Etowah. And check that. Wait a minute. Etowah beat Alexandria. That was the big shocker in 5A. They lost 14 to nothing. They couldn't score a touchdown. So Alexandria will drop down in the top 10 next week. St. Paul's uh, won against Dothan 34 to 14. And Briarwood Christian, which we're going to talk about more in a minute, they beat Fairfield 23 to 6. So there's your 5A uh, top 10 right there and how they fared. Let's move on now to 6A. As we go to 6A, number 10, coming into the top 10 this week, John Lutzford will be very happy to know that uh, his Patriots have made the top 10, and they did it in style by coming and beating Helena 37-7. Blunt uh, beat B.C. Rain 41-8. Daphne in another huge ball game. They lost to Fairhope. Now, Fairhope is a good football team. They were not expected to beat Daphne. I got some notes on that on quick notes about high school. What a great game that was. Spanish Fort beat Baldwin County. Wetumpka continues to roll. They ran all over Chilton County and the smoke still blazing down there, 56 to 19. Opelika, don't know how to even explain how this happened, but I do because they're so close and they're such big rivals. Benjamin Russell, uh, beat Opelika 19-14. to 14. Wow. Opelika the fifth ranked team and n- not that it gets any easier because Opelika's got to play Central of Phoenix City. <laughs> Jamie Dubose Good the luck. number one ranked team in the whole state of Alabama in 7A. Ramsey won. They beat Parker. Oxford uh, beat Albertville 43 to nothing. Pinson Valley continues to hammer it down. Uh, the Knicks, uh, Bo Knicks at quarterback Put 35 points on the board against Jasper, made it 35 to nothing. They've got four first place votes, by the way, in this week's Alabama Sports Writers Association poll. And number one, Austin continues to play big. They beat Columbia 56 to nothing. And Asa Martin on that team, we're going to talk about him some more in just a moment on the high school section. Let's move on now to 7A and how they fared. Coming in uh, at number 10 this week is Jeff Davis out of. Uh, Montgomery, they beat Baker 30 to 23. Theodore lost to Davidson 17 to nothing. So short lived in the top 10 uh, for Theodore. Fairhope, they beat Daphne, as I mentioned. Auburn, they uh, beat Enterprise 48 to 17. Spain Park in an unbelievable ball game with Mountain Brook. I got some, some things to tell you about there. They double overtime 51 to 50, basically. Uh, Mount Brook went for two in the second overtime, and they got it and, and knocked Spain Park out. That's their second loss. McGill Tulin beat Foley 35 to 13. Hewitt Trustful, man, they just, it's almost like you put the, the pedal all the way to the floor and they just don't let it up. They won big against Buckhorn 49 to nothing. Same thing with Thompson. Everybody thought Oak Mountain was going to give Thompson a game. Everybody <laughs> thought Vanderbilt was going to give Alabama a game, too, right? But, uh, Tagovailoa and company at, at Thompson with Coach Mark Freeman, they went in and, and kicked Oak Mountain 49-14. to 14. I'm going to tell you some stats on that game in just a minute. Hoover continues to win big. Tuscaloosa County, they beat them 63 to nothing. Josh Niblett, the same way. And then the number one ranked team in the state is Central Phoenix City. They beat Smith Station 62 to nothing. And, Max, if you'll look at the top four at the scores, they just don't win. <laughs> no. You know, not to refer to Alabama Vandy again, but that's how these yeah. big teams do. You know, and I know, you know, differential in margin as far as scores is concerned, it's not supposed to count. Right. In, but it's a psychological thing. Well, the is. voters are going to – if you look at two teams and one wins by two points and one wins by 50 – Guess right. where the vote's going. That's right. And it also 50. sends a message next it week. It does, yes. Because, uh, by the way, Thompson's got Pelham this week. That's uh, another one of those rivalry games. That's going to be huge. So, want to watch out for that. We'll have coverage of that next week as well. On recruiting now, we go back to, to uh, Central of Phoenix City. Get this. Uh, Justin Ross, the wide receiver that number five in the country on a lot of people, ESPN, everybody else got him. He only played the first half now, okay? So they won 62-7, to seven, yeah. okay? He only played the first half. He caught four passes for 59 yards and a nine-yard touchdown, but he also just returned to punt 43 yards for a touchdown too. So he's Mr. Everything, good ball player. I also want to talk about Asa Martin. We know Asa okay. Martin. I talk about him every week. Running back from Austin. Interesting thing happened there as um, – uh, running backs coach from Alabama, Burton Burns. No, coach he Bruce. showed up at the ball game just to see Asa Martin run. Let me tell you what Asa did. Uh, 
Of course, he's already committed to Auburn. Yeah. Remember that name. He's committed to Auburn. Alabama running back coach shows up. But he ran for 113 yards and a touchdown on nine carries, and he didn't play the second half either. <laughs> okay, they just sat him down. They won 56 to nothing. But here's the interesting thing. Martin has now run for 860 yards already this year. He just has half a season, though. Right. So he could hit, very easily hit 2,000. Yeah. They leave him in for another half. Yeah. He'd hit it this past week. So uh, that's interesting. Miles Mason, the uh, defensive back at Hewitt Trustful, he's projected as a safety in college, but he scored the game's first touchdown on a 14 yard run, added another 65 yard run later on as uh, uh, Hewitt Trustful rolled over Buckhorn 49 to nothing, finish with three rushes for 86 yards. That's, what is that, 36 <laughs> yards a, a carry, whatever that is. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, good ball players around the state. There's some some highlights there of, of just some of the recruiting. Uh, there's another guy at Park Crossing we had talked about um, that by the name of Tank Jenkins. He's an offensive lineman. Uh, he's yet to commit, so we'll see how he goes. But the Thunderbirds at, at – uh, Made the trip, uh, shut out Russell County 35 to nothing with his help. He opened some mighty big holes as well. Well, I'm going to talk about a new thing here on the high school segment, and that's quick facts. But before we do that, I want to tell you that we made it down to Prattville this week. We watched an up-and-coming team, Lee Montgomery. They've got some great players on that team. We're going to show you some some highlights there of, of what we took. Lee ended up winning the game 51-37, to a big offensive uh, uh, show there to Darian Murray with a 26 yard TD uh, pass there for Lee. Also, Canarius Johnson from Lee. You see him there going 67 yards on a touchdown. That's number three. And then uh, we got some highlights of Pravel. Pravel scored 37 points. D'Angelo Jones is their big guy, 14 yard TD run there as well, and another six yard run, and then a 59-yard run by D'Angelo Jones. So while you're watching those clips there, I just want to say, Max, as I mentioned earlier last time with Prattville, their defense is not taking the right angles. They're giving up the big play, and obviously you see some of the big plays there on your screen from Lee, but Lee's got a ball team. Prattville's defense is not what we're used to seeing. No, I, you know, I can call, I was, that's my hometown. Right. And I'll tell you one quick fact. You want to add it to your facts? I played against Robert E. Lee their first ball game they ever played. Uh, they played Prattville in 1955, I believe it was. Wow. And uh, Robert E. Lee won, but I'll tell you what, we fought them to the fourth quarter. Uh, and they were, and that's it. Wasn't two classifications. It was double A and single A. We were single A. They were double A. Uh, and I still have pictures of that one. That was an interesting ball game. Well, you know, I said on my uh, Facebook pre. Uh, by the way, ask Game Day TV on Facebook. I put every Friday night whatever game I'm at. I try to do a little little preview of that game. And uh, I said that you know Lee Montgomery has way more athletes than a lot of people are giving him sure. credit for. I, if I was voting, they'd be in the top ten. They got that kind of mm-hmm. kind of talent on the field. But uh, used to this time of year, for the past ten or fifteen years, we always say, "Well, Prattville's four and zero." Absolutely. And Prattville's not four and zero this year. So uh, we'll look for them in the future. Uh, I really was was uh, I knew that if they could have won this game against Lee, it would have uh, jump started their season back. But they lost to Wetumpka. Now they've lost to Lee. Okay. High school quick facts, just things you may want to know around the state going on in high school. Number one thing I got on my list is Coach Fred Yancey at Briarwood Christian gets his 300th win. Now, Coach, 300 wins, that's That's an That's 10 games a year. Guess what? That's 30 years. Yeah. Just think about that. That's right. So, congratulations to him. Uh, Coach Yancey and I have been friends for many, many years, and I couldn't be more proud to announce that for him. It's 300 wins. Mount Brook beats Spain Park 51 to 50 in double overtime. What a ball game. What I mean, you know, it's only one of me. I, I see scores like this. I say, man, why didn't I pick that game to go to? Yeah. Of course, I'm glad I went down to Prattville. But, and Stacy Mills, and by the way, and his group down there, they do a great job. The guys on the radio do a great job broadcasting, and Stacy sets it up where you can watch the game as well. So that's a good thing. But to get back to Mountain Brook and Spain Park, Spain Park ranked number five in the state most of the season. They had a tough loss last week. Now they come in here, they go to double overtime. Mountain Brook decides to go for two, and they get it, Max. That's how they win. T.R. Miller led Mobile Christian in the first half uh, pretty good. And 
I put out an upset alert at halftime, like, look out, number one, Mobile Christian may be going away, but you know the coach down there. Very well. And uh, they have a kid by the name of Alex Moore. He just turned him loose in the second half. He let him have five touchdowns. <laughs> and T.R. Miller uh, ended up losing to Mobile Christian. Fairhope, another big ball game with Daphne, always uh, a rivalry. Fairhope wins in dramatic fashion over rival uh, Daphne 20 to 17 in overtime. Devin Mitchell threw uh, to the tight end Jackson Turner for 10 yard TD. The interesting thing, it was the exact same play that Cam Newton threw to uh, Le- Lessinger Kirch- yeah. uh, in the end zone to beat Alabama when they did. It's the exact same play, and it worked to perfection for Fairhope. Uh, when they did in 2010 in the Iron Bowl, he stole that play. That game is called the War of the Eastern Shore. It is. All right? And that is exactly what that is. Hewitt Trustful can't go uh, quick facts without telling you that they're 4-0 and another blowout win over Buckhorn. But the thing there is, 539 total yards in that high school game. Guess what? Paul Tyson threw for 235 I know that day before. <laughs> That's Bear Bryant's uh, great-grandson, in case you don't know who Paul Tyson is. And can you guess where he might be going to play his college ball? Previously unbeaten Madison uh, County. Now, they've had a good run, but they get knocked out by Randolph. Uh, the LSU commit, Tate uh, Province, still with an ankle injury. It finally cost him. And uh, we talked about Justin Ross, uh, how he did in the first half, and also uh, Burton Brooks, the uh, Burns, the uh, running back coach for Alabama showing up. He just stopped on the way going to Vanderbilt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's your high school report for this week. We appreciate you uh, giving me time to give it to you. Hope we gave you some information you can use. We're going to come back. We've got a lot going on here as we wrap this edition of Game Day TV up right after this. When you're in business, you need to stay as visible as possible. Turn your car or truck into a moving billboard to reach new customers all day, every day. With high-impact, full-color graphic vehicle wraps from Sundown Tent and Design. From design to expert installation, Sundown Tent and Design is a vital tool in your marketing arsenal to keep your business in the public eye. Visit them today at sundownwraps.com or call 205-337-3691. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. Thanks, Max and Jerry. In Alabama, fall is just a shorter way of saying football, and we will be glad when fall weather catches up to our football schedule. We've had a lot of warm games this season, but so far, this weekend is shaping up to be very pleasant. A front will pass through Wednesday, lowering the humidity. Did you hear that? Lower humidity. Can I get a good amen? Another front late Friday will bring true fall-like weather. So, happy fall, y'all. It's going to be a great weekend to enjoy football, friends, and family. For Friday, we have cooler afternoons just in time for some high schools to celebrate homecoming. The high in North Alabama is 80 with a low of 56. Central Alabama will be a high of 84 and a low of 60. Southern parts of Alabama will be a high of 91 with a low of 68. Troy State heads to Louisiana to take on LSU this Saturday. The high will be 90 and a low of 66. Alabama plays in Tuscaloosa and it will be great weather for tailgating with a high of 78 and dropping into the 60s by the end of the game. Auburn plays at home with a high of 85 and a low of 61. Nice, partly cloudy weather will make for a great day and night on the plains. No rain jackets or ponchos needed for this week's games, but a great weekend to show off those cute game day outfits from Helena Mercantile. That's it for game day TV weather. I'm Kim Scherer, and I'll see you next week.
I want to thank Kim Sher for game day weather. You know, last week, Max, we're just going <laughs> to tell you, we kind of peeled back the curtain. There was a uh, an editing flaw uh, on Kim's when she went <laughs> like that. Okay, and the first thing I thought about was hee-haw yeah. when, when the guy always <laughs> turned my, around. That was my favorite show. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> you were gone. gone but yeah. anyway, she messed it up, okay? And, and of course, it, we just left it in there because, you know, we're not perfect. I mean, I am, but Max no, and no, Kim, you know. I'm kind of flawed, you know. I'm yeah. flawed. I've been, I've been yeah. flawed for years. <laughs> you want to tell you how many, but that's all right. Go ahead and let's roll. All right, let's talk about big game reminders coming up. Big games this week coming up start with Ole Miss at Alabama. Well, you know, Ole Miss has won two of the last four uh, against Alabama. Now, I don't think – I think that was – I think that's in the history books. And if I had to guess, that's probably posted on the, on the dressing room bulletin board right now. Coach right. Saban is not going to let that happen again. Ole Miss has not only had some severe physical problems. They've lost five offensive linemen. They lost a wide receiver. But now they've got internal problems, not, not, not communication problems, but the administration's already put out a search team to replace the coach that's not even in – he just took the interim job. You know, I thought that was the time it was awful in that. But Ole Miss, uh, Ole Miss will play hard, I think, for the first half. But Alabama's got too much depth and, and too much. They want to roll for a national championship. Alabama wins that one by more than two touchdowns, I'm sure. All right, Mississippi State travels to the plains of Auburn. Auburn's going to be ready. Will they be fired up? Will, yeah, yeah I think they will. They, they, I think they got it – they're headed back in the right direction, Jerry, now. Uh, Coach Malzahn's got his running game back at Petway, the starting running back. If his foot's okay, he'll get a chance to get snaps. But also the Johnson kid, uh, Cameron Johnson, is the one that really set it set the uh, Missouri team back the other this past week. He scored five touchdowns and, and four early on, and I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to try to uh, basically just run against Mississippi State, get them to come up. They'll play action. Step, st- you know, step through for 300 yards against Missouri. In addition yeah. to uh, they took four fumbles away from them and, and an interception. So. You know, Auburn's ready to play. I think they're poised now to come out. And, and what better time to do it against a Mississippi State team that's always given Auburn trouble always. at home, though. Right. Do it on your own court. And the eagle flies, and I, you know, and I think uh, Auburn comes away with a win. All right, Georgia goes to Tennessee. We've touched on Boy. it, but you expect Georgia to win, I right? do expect Georgia to win, but I'm, I'm tentative about that because I have seen these problems develop, and it looks like Coach Smart has got something developing there with a quarterback controversy. Uh, the Eason kid was the starter last year as a pure freshman. Uh, he gets eight or eight, nine wins in the bowl game. <laughs> and now uh, he was injured. He steps aside. A young freshman comes in. They're undefeated. They rank number seven in the country. What do you do? He's well now. Do, do you play two quarterbacks? When you go, you know what the story is. If you happen to play two, you don't have one. That's so, right. I, you know, I'm, I'm really watching that. Tennessee is in complete turmoil. Their communication is off the chart, uh, to say the least. So that, but playing in Knoxville is a tough place to play. If you've never been, you said you sit in the stop. I know those those state. Oh, those, absolutely. The stadium, the stadium moves yeah. up there, and it's not just what happens on the field; it's what happens up, you know, two hundred feet high. That's right. So I, I like Georgia in a close one uh, in that one. But and if it happens. Uh, the things are going to get really tough for Butch Jones in Tennessee. All right. Question of the day. Does Troy have a chance to beat They LSU? always have a chance. I mean, look, particularly the way we've seen LSU play, they are nowhere near the, the consistency that we've seen an LSU team play before. Troy will take advantage of that. They're going to come out throwing the ball. I, I, they're going to go to a gun with five wides and throw it every snap, I believe, to start with. Get them to, get them to try to drift off of that, rush three and drop eight. Then they turn and hand it to a 250-pound running back uh, in Chubb. So I, I think – I think Troy's got a chance. The only thing that Troy uh, will have problems, they have to get up big early because I think in the fourth quarter is where they lose the talent base because they don't have enough players. The depth. The, the depth factor happens every time. So, Troy, well, I think LSU wins it, but I think Troy gives them all they want. All right. Before we go to what's for supper with, with Coach Max, I want to just tell you a new segment we got coming up next week. We filmed it already, so we'll just tell you we were – fan in the flies, but our game day chef, Marty Staples, are going to have some tips on tailgating on how you can impress your friends. We'll have that segment for you next week as uh, that will be running as well. So, okay, Max, let's go to, hey, Max, what's for supper? Man, what you got? I got one of your favorites this week. Uh-oh. I went to the freezer. This time of year, you clean the kind of freezer, so I had some shrimp, uh-huh. shrimp and, I, and I defrosted that, and I sauteed that in the, in the fryer. You know, a little spice. Right. 
Guess what I put that over? Mm. A bed of cheese grits. <laughs> you know the shrimp and cheese grits. I know that's one of your favorites. Always uh, very good. A side order of hash browns. I did a house salad with homemade Thousand Island dressing. Now, what I do with my Thousand Island, I call it comeback sauce because if you can stand it, you'll come back to get more. <laughs> it's a mayonnaise-based Thousand Island with a little cayenne pepper and a little vinegar in it to give mm. you a little tangy taste. We'll dr- boy, and I'll get, you know, I do a garlic toast. I, right. do, I love my garlic Texas right. toast in a fryer, flip it a couple of times, make it soggy. Uh, that, and we're going to wash all that down with a big old pitcher of sweet iced tea. Yeah. But let me just tell you about I, dessert, I know, I know. It's coming. My folks. dessert, guys, if you've never done this, it's a bourbon-based Louisiana bread pudding. And I'm telling you, you don't just use a, table, a tablespoon of bourbon in it, but it just gives you that little tangy taste. But the sugar and the bread pudding, along with that little sauce I put on top, I promise you, you eat it, you want to take a nap. Wouldn't do for Barney Fife to go out on <laughs> duty with uh, with uh, bread pudding on his breath. Hey, we got a several sponsors you see there in the credits. One we had never mentioned is BedazzleMeMore.com. BedazzleMeMore.com for game day apparel right here. You can order it from her. Okay, from Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon right here on Game Day TV.